What happens to the temperature of water when you add table salt? This is room temperature table salt. This is room temperature water. Got my thermometer. My beaker is now half full of water. In the temperature, 17 degrees, add salt. Stir gently, or you could use a stirring rod if your students keep breaking your thermometers. Check out the temperature. No way. Unbelievable. When I heard about this, I had to try it and see if it worked. The temperature went down. Ah! Here's the beaker with the thermometer, and we'll say it's starting at 21 degrees Celsius. This was a different trial I did. The salt is sodium chloride and is solid. It dissolves when it hits the water, splitting into sodium and chloride ion, while the temperature drops. If the temperature dropped, this means energy left the water, slowing the water molecules. It's also worth noting the room was 21 degrees Celsius, so energy wasn't flowing into the surrounding air. This is a salt crystal in the solid state that is held together by ionic bonds. This is a nice low energy state that's more stable. The melting point by heating is 801 degrees Celsius or 1474 Fahrenheit and is the temperature at which ionic bonds are overcome and the sodium and chloride can move around freely. This takes lots of energy to keep them separate, hence the high melting point, and is not stable if the temperature cools. We're not heating the salt, we dropped it in water. The water comes in and breaks off pieces of the crystal structure, so it takes energy to break apart the crystal lattice and dissolve the salt. This is endothermic and cools the water. We can show a positive enthalpy for the salt, or delta H, to signify the salt gained energy, but the water lost energy, so it feels cold. On a graph, we could show that like this to signify it taking energy to split the salt with the water. The oxygen end of a water molecule is partially negative, which means the electrons hang out with it more, which exposes the positive protons of the hydrogen. Logically enough, neighboring waters will arrange so that negatives stick to positives with what are called hydrogen bonds shown in red. Now water must spread out to make room for the sodium and chloride ions that are dissolving, and this requires breaking hydrogen bonds. More energy is taken from the water cooling it. Nature must reduce the positiveness around the sodium ion to make it more stable. This is accomplished by water surrounding the sodium with the negative oxygens, so the oxygens can pump negatives or electron density into the positiveness of the sodium ion, making it more stable, sort of like all the waters working to neutralize the sodium. The opposite happens with the negative chloride. Partially positive hydrogens surround the chloride and absorb negativeness, helping to make it more neutral and stable. So breaking the salt apart and spreading out the water took energy and cooled the water. While surrounding the ions with water, called hydration shells, made them more stable and released energy, warming the water. We can see this is the drop on the graph. We'll note it on our diagram and jot down exothermic enthalpy is seen as negative since energy is released. Part 1 and 2 took energy and were endothermic. Part 3 released energy when we made the hydration shells and was exothermic. But Part 1 and 2's absorption of water's energy was greater than the energy released from the hydration shell, so overall the water cooled. Salts don't always cool, but table salt does. Check out this video where you test your knowledge of combustion and predict which candle is going to go out first. Anything I should add in or change? Let me know in the comments. Blue wins. Did you get it? Number two.